Please rise. In the case of the state versus William Freights, sir, a jury of your peers has found you guilty of all charges. Now, before I proceed to sentencing, would defense like to enter a plea in mitigation? Yes, Your Honor, we would. Now, let's proceed. Your Honor, Willie Freights has made a terrible mistake but not so terrible that he deserves the most severe punishment. He has no priors, none. And because my client has spent most of his life in foster homes under less than ideal circumstances, I'm asking that you please take that into consideration when passing sentence. Will you be presenting character witnesses? We. No, Your Honor, there are no character witnesses. Really? No social workers, clergymen, letters of reference? None, Your Honor. Counselor, are you trying to tell this court that this, this nice young man has no advocates? Nobody from his past that is willing to step forward and vouch for his character? No, Your Honor. I will be this young man's advocate. Ah. Counselor, have a seat. Step forward, please. Do you know this man? I sure don't. Sir, how long have you known the defendant, William Freights? I knew Willie while he was in his mother's womb, Your Honor. So were you his... Obstetrician, sir? No, Your Honor. And what is your relationship to the defendant? I'm his creator. And his savior. will be taken. Now, counsel, both of you, approach the bench. I want to know and I want to know right now. Do either of you know that madman? No, Your Honor, we don't. I warn you, I will not be made a fool of in my own courtroom. Your Honor, Please don't let that bizarre incident influence your decision here in any way today. Your reputation for maximum allowable sentence precedes you. Please, for once, be merciful. Mm. Noted. Now, back to your stations. Let's get the show on the road. Ready? 
brace yourself, they don't call them maximum mic for nothing. Will the defendant please rise? William Freights, I sentence you to 10 years. 10 years in the state penitentiary. Case closed. All rise. 10 years? Forgive me, Lord, but I do hate that man. I'll file an appeal as quickly as I can. You can count on it. The difference on that. Wouldn't it be a relief to not have to do that? How did you get in here? Your wife is right, Judge. You really should retire. You know my wife. Yes, I do. And she talks to you about me. You can say that.
We will now hear the case of Mr. Michael Porter versus Eternity. Is the prosecution prepared to make its opening statement? It is, Your Honor. That would be you, Mr. Porter. <laughs> All right. All right. This is absurd. Your Honor. Yes, what is it you want? I'm sorry, Mr. Porter, but in this courtroom, there's only one judge. Now, take your seat. The defendant takes great pride in being a harsh judge. In fact, he's known among his colleagues and adversaries as Maximum Mike. He takes great pleasure in it. That is a lie. There will be no further interruptions in this court. Your Honor, the facts will show that the accused, Michael Porter, is guilty of perverting justice. And once the facts are revealed, you'll have no choice by your own law but to find this man guilty and deserving of the ultimate penalty. Are you ready to call witnesses? Whoa, whoa, do I get to make a statement or not? May I remind you, Mr. Porter? You're in my court now. Wonderful. And for the record, I plead not guilty. <laughs> It's not very original, Mr. Porter. <laughs> For my first witness, Your Honor, I called D. Sanders. Wait, wait a minute. I never did anything to her. You never did anything for me either, or for any of my clients. My trials were by the book. You cannot say otherwise. No, I certainly can't. Miss Sanders, how many cases did you win in Michael Porter's court? None. Not a single one. And she appealed every one and lost every one. But you had many friends on the appeals court, did you not? Well, yes, yes. They, they respect my judgments up there. Mr. Porter was particularly unjust to Willie Freights. He gave him 10 years for a first-time offense. It is what the law called for. We all know the law, Mr. Porter. But how many of us are capable of keeping it? Mr. Thomas Sanders. I called to the stand Willie Freeds. Mr. Freights, you were found guilty in Michael Porter's court. Do you dispute that verdict? No, sir. I do not. You hear that? Huh? Right from the defendant's mouth. May I remind you, Mr. Porter, in this court, you are the defendant. Mr. Freights, do you think that 10 years for a first time defense is harsh? Look, I didn't expect any justice, and I sure didn't get any. You didn't expect to get caught and brought to justice, did you? This isn't about him. This is about you. Thank you very much, Willie. For my next witness, I'd like to call Lydia Porter. Hold, hold on a second there. This is highly irregular. A wife cannot give testimony against the husband without the husband's prior consent. She can in this court. 
Mrs. Porter, how long have you and Mr. Porter been married? Oh, nearly 50 years now. Have they been good years? Oh, yes. I just wish he would retire so we could enjoy the last few years of our lives. Olivia, please, please don't. Would you call your husband a just man? Well, my husband is a stickler for the law. He is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But is he a good man? Well, he's a very generous man. He always gives money to charity, and he gives clothing to the poor. Unfortunately, Mrs. Porter, in this trial, good deeds are not admissible as evidence. So I ask again, is he a good man? I suppose in the ultimate sense, none of us is good. Step down, Mrs. Porter. Thank you. I called Dr. Carl Schumann. Dr. Schumann, you know Michael Porter? He's known to me, sir. We were on trial in his courtroom for insurance fraud, according to the records was the victim of a witch hunt. Nonetheless, those were the charges? Yes. And you were tried by a jury of your peers and found guilty? That's correct. And what was the sentence handed down to you by Michael Porter? That was so long ago. What does that have to do with anything? Your Honor, if the witness will answer the question, it will be evident to the court. Proceed. What was the sentence? One year in a minimum security facility, all but one month suspended. <laughs> Not a particularly harsh sentence. He was an upstanding member of society who had made a mistake. Still, he broke the law. He was guilty. No further questions, Your Honor. For my last witness, I'd like to call Ramon Gonzalez. Your Honor, motion to dismiss this witness. On what grounds? On the grounds that it can't be Ramon Gonzalez. And why is that? Because Ramon Gonzalez is dead. Mr. Porter, your definition of that word is irrelevant in this court. Ramon, you were found guilty in Michael Porter's court, correct? Yeah. Yes, sir. Of what? Well, my uncle needed a ride, and I didn't know it, but he was doing a drive-by for the 25th Street Diabolos. A multiple homicide? Yeah, yes. It was horrible. But I didn't know about it. I just figured he needed a ride, you know? And yet, you were convicted for being an accessory to third-degree murder. Yes, sir. And because this happened just three days after your 18th birthday, it was up to Judge Porter to determine where you would be incarcerated, in juvenile or adult prison. Yes, sir. And he put you in the adult prison population? Yes, sir. Maximum security, same as my uncle. And what happened in prison? I, uh... I was assaulted by two lifers. And then they got me with their shivs 20 times. They stabbed you to death. They stabbed him to death. Ouch. No further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Gonzalez. Your Honor, the prosecution is out of line. I started out as a court clerk. I can't tell you how many times I watched rapists and murderers walk on technicalities, and I vowed if I was ever given the chance, that would never happen on my watch. And what about poor Ramon? I have many others waiting to testify, just like him. Yes, yes, and all of them caught committing a crime. Yes, I have been harped. I 
know that. But your honor, am I supposed to apologize for this? Is that what I'm supposed to do? In the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You see, Mr. Porter, I too am a stickler for the law. Would you please stand? In accordance with the law, this court finds you guilty. Your Honor, may I recommend the harshest possible sentence for the defendant, eternal damnation. Mr. Porter. Before I pass sentence, would you like to enter a plea of mitigation? Your Honor, if I am no good, then absolutely nobody is any good. You have spoken correctly. Would you like to call any character witnesses? I have nobody to call. Is there no one in this room who will be this man's advocate? Lydia? I have no defense. If you would advocate for Willie Frase, please, will you be an advocate for me? I will be your advocate. Objection! It's conflict of interest! Here he was unjustly sentenced. Happily for you, I was condemned in your place. I took on your penalty. Hold it. The accuser has been demanding to have you. Wants to sift you like wheat, but because me has no power. Forgiven? Yes. Now go and do likewise. <laughs> Judge Porter? Judge Porter. Are you alright, sir? What were we doing? You were about to sentence the Freights kid? I haven't done that yet. No, sir. We're waiting.
Please have a seat. Brace yourself. They don't call a maximum life for nothing. And then please stand. In the case of the state versus William Fritz, sir, the jury of your peers has found you guilty on all counts. Under normal circumstances, I would recommend the harshest of sentences. But I'm feeling rather Young man, your whole life you've never had a break, have you? No, Your Honor. Well, maybe it's about time. It is. I sentence you to one year probation. Your supervision, of course. Yes, case closed. All rise. Oh. Jesus, thank you. You realize this is a miracle, don't you? <sighs> Shoes on floor, show me. Retire? <laughs> yeah. Let's find a place near a good church. Well, if it's a miracle, I had nothing to do with it. Yeah.